That's right, Sonic Boom isn't just coming to Wii U, but to 3DS too. And we got to see it for the very first time in a recent preview event where I played it for over an hour. And this game is an entirely different beast than the Wii U version, and based on my playtime, it's actually the one that I prefer. Well, so far. But, if you want to know more about the Wii U version, make sure to check out our new preview linked in the description below. Now while Sonic Boom Wii U uses hub worlds to connect everything together, Sonic Boom 3DS uses the more conventional world map. And that map is what you'll use to access the three different types of levels that the game features, being adventure levels, tube races, and rival races. And like with the Wii U version, the adventure stages are where you'll spend the bulk of your time. But the ones here do a much better job of capturing the classic Sonic essence, all the while layering on new adventure elements to make it feel very much like its own thing. I mean, at its core, it plays very similar to previous Sonic side-scrolling games. You can run, you can jump, and you can take down enemies with simple attacks. It's pretty standard stuff, but I used the word adventure earlier for a reason. And it's because these stages are not only mostly non-linear, meaning you can go about them in any number of ways, but they're pretty big too. So much so that each level even has its own Metroid-style map that you can bring up on the lower screen that only displays the areas you've actually visited. And it even includes a percentage showing how much of the level you've explored. Now these levels are actually divided into segments, which you launch between using a giant slingshot-like device. Now, in order to fully explore these levels, you'll have to make use of four different characters, being Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Newcomer Sticks, that you can switch between at any time by tapping their icon on the lower screen. Well, once Sonic unlocks the rest of them during the course of the game, that is. And of course, they each bring their own unique abilities to the table. Sonic can perform a mid-air dash in any of the four main directions to bust through obstacles. Tails can use his flying ability to ride air currents to high areas, and also has the ability to throw bombs and stick to enemies. Knuckles can dig into the ground at certain spots to explore underground tunnels. And Styx probably has the most interesting one of all, allowing you to throw a boomerang they have full control over for a limited time, which is useful for triggering faraway switches or taking down distant enemies. Now, although you're still ultimately just working your way to a goal, there are various collectibles to find along the way, including blueprints that can be used in Tails' shop. But in order to find that blueprint, I had to use Tails to access a secret underwater cavern and explore it using a Sea Fox submarine. But unfortunately, I don't have any footage of it in action, but it offers a very different feeling take on the main gameplay, while retaining the primary exploration element. The catch is that it's timed, so you have to move fast. But fortunately, you do have access to sonar that will highlight objects of interest on the map, including air supply tanks that will give you more time but you'll also have to fend off obstacles along the way using the submarine's missiles. Now beyond the adventure stages, another type of level you'll encounter are tube races, which are essentially this game's take on Temple Run. These 3D stages have Sonic running away from the camera along a series of tracks that you'll have to quickly move between in order to dodge dead ends, enemies, and other hazards. Now, although Sonic can't normally jump in these, there are points where he'll have to engage his inner beam like a zipline and swing side to side to avoid additional dangers. Finally, there are the rival races, which reminded me a lot of the multiplayer versus matches from Sonic 3. In the one I tried, I had a race against Styx in a linear but lengthy level. And let me tell you, it wasn't easy. I mean, you'll need to react fast in order to keep up while avoiding all kinds of obstacles, such as by using your inner beam to cross dangerous terrain, or hopping under rails that you can grind. Now beyond the levels, I also learned a little bit more about the game's story, which revolves around the new nemesis, Lyric, who's looking for crystal shards. And he's kidnapped Amy to help find them all, as she knows how to discover their locations. Overall, I had a great time with Sonic Boom 3DS, whereas the Wii U demo that I played had some issues. The 3DS one is remarkably polished. It looks great, controls well, ran perfectly, and seems to offer something a little different from the usual Sonic fair while staying true to his roots. And it launches this November. Oh, and if you want to know more about the Wii U version, make sure to check out our new preview linked in the description below. Thanks for watching, and make sure to stay tuned to GameSpan.com for more on Sonic Boom, including upcoming discussion videos very soon.